Before this episode begins, there is something that I accidentally skipped over that I want to talk about. In the Black Gulch, yes, we're coming back here. If you go by the corner of, like, this cliff, there is a ledge underneath this cliff. And on this ledge, in this hidden cave area, you get to meet with Luca Teal of- Wait, no, no, no! I'm- I'm so sorry! No, I ac I accidentally hit R2 and I stabbed her in the face. Oh... You... My thoughts... Are very... Scattered. What is this curse? The question rings in my mind, but I haven't the focus to answer it. Loss frightens me no end. Loss of memory, loss of self. If I were told that by killing you, I would be freed of this curse, then I would draw my sword without hesitation. I don't want to die. I want to exist. I would sacrifice anything, anything at all for this. It shames me, but it is the truth. Sometimes I feel obsessed with this insignificant thing called self. Even so, I am compelled to preserve it. Am I wrong to feel so? Surely you do the same in my shoes. Maybe we're all cursed from the moment we're born. Sometimes I feel even... Am I wrong? Yeah. I accidentally skipped over that because that is a very easy conversation to miss. Like, how would you even go about accidentally stumbling upon that upon this ledge. Hey everybody, Dude Souls here, and welcome back to another episode of Dark Souls 2. Last time we made it through the undead crypt and discovered what was left of King Vendrick, creator of Dranglaic. Yeah, we found him in a sad old hollow state, aimlessly wandering around a jail cell with his royal armor discarded. We rummaged through the armor and discovered the king's ring. And here we are back in the ruined fork road bonfire of the shaded ruins. Yeah, it seems like everything relating to the royal family is like coming back to here. Like we we went, well, of course we went over there to go to go get one of the great souls, but then we went over there to Drangleia Castle. But there's still one more path we have yet to take. The, this this one's the path where we have these uh, petrification kobolds, and I think they're kobolds. They're either co kobolds or rats. And yeah, we have an ogre to fight. All right, now that we got that guy dealt with, let's finally see what we've been looking forward to. Hmm. Remember these doors. P produce the symbol of the king. Well. We've seen a couple of these across Drangleic, and now, finally, we have something that could be considered the symbol of the king. So, let's just go into our inventory. I'm just gonna go to my bracing knuckle ring, and then I'm gonna scroll down to the king's ring. Lo and behold, the king's ring from King Vendrick himself is in fact the symbol of the king. You don't need to wear the ring through the entire opening animation of these gates, you just need to get it started, but still. And welcome to Aldia's Keep. A giant mansion in the middle of what seems to be a little bit of a mountain range. Like, right right adjacent to the to Drangleic Castle so yeah there's definitely some royal royal influences in this mansion so let's just let's just wander around the courtyard for a bit there's a fire seed right there so if you're a pyromancer hey that back that, that can be pretty useful there's just a lot of items just scattered around this courtyard there are also kobolds over there we got 10 poison throwing knives yeah, again, these are the petrification kobolds. Oh, there's a lot of them? Okay, there we go. 
they drop spells actually that spell is affinity and that is a hex uh it creates a dark mass that seems to pursue a target with the will of its own interesting soul of a nameless soldier and a petrified dragon bone over here we have three alluring skulls i i don't think i've in all my years of playing Dark Souls 2, I don't think I've ever actually used an alluring skull. Alright. Over here we have a chest, which is ah, no 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 wait no 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 Okay. Ugh Okay. Uh haha. -ha. I didn't see that coming. I didn't see that coming. Alright, yeah, you can do your Oh! Oh, whoa, dude! What attack what was that? You just I don't even have any bonfires. I have to go back from the shaded woods. All right, it appears I can get behind the mimic, so I'm gonna try to poison it or build up its poison meter. I know its hitboxes are really weird, and it does kind of like have the possibility of like just biting me from behind, because you know that's a very Dark Souls thing of it to do. Dark Souls two of it to do. Uh, you get a dark mask and a malformed skull from that mimic right there. The dark mask is... Wait, hold on. Th this is pretty hilarious. Look at this. It literally turns you into the, gr into, into the Grim Reaper. Yeah. Um, and then Malformed Skull, which you saw is a weapon. It is a great hammer. And, uh, yeah. It, it, it is a jawbone <laughs> on a stick. The malformed skull. The skull of some unidentified creature. Swing as a great hammer to use as a weapon. Possibly the skull of a dragon. A rare specimen, likely too rare to be swung about willy-nilly. Which does make sense, as it needs like 35 strength to wield, which is a lot, even this far into the game. Un unless you're like a dedicated strength build, where that's the only thing you dump any points into. And right in the shack, right next to the mimic that I died to earlier, we have our first bonfire. The four garden bonfire. And, oh, I just respawned all the kobolds. Yep, I did. I'm just gonna ignore them and head right up to the front gates. Because, oh boy, this is a very cool level. Right here in this fountain, you do get a radiant life gem. I don't know why you would bother with that, but whatever. whatever. Um, I was gonna say, I thought I missed something because it's at this moment where I'm going back to the Black Gulch. And when you talk to Lucatil in all four of her locations, no man in the Lost Bastille, No Man's Wharf, Earthen Peak, in the Black Gulch, she appears one more time in Aldia's Keep. Who are you? Oh, no, forgive me. I know you. Yes, of course. How goes your journey? I know not what you seek in this faraway land, but I pray for your safety. My name is Lucatil. I beg of you, remember my name, for I may not myself. My name is Lucatil. I beg of you, remember mine, for I may. Yeah, she's basically completely enveloped by the curse she she can't remember us she can barely remember who she is she thinks she's not gonna even remember who she is like in the up upcoming yeah just like in general uh, uh she's such a good character and i can't believe i accidentally almost skipped her appearance right here <clears throat> yeah the curse is a very tragic tale of forgetfulness, loss of identity, returning to the conformity of just being a mindless zombie wandering around. But now, it's time for us to actually walk into Aldia's Keep. And we're immediately invaded by Aslatil of Mira. It's heavily implied that this is one of Lucatil's uh, brothers. Like, does she have one brother or two brothers? 
I'm not sure. But anyways, yeah, it's heavily implied that this dark spirit is Lucatiel's brother. Based on, like, the fact that he's also wearing a mask. Uh, he is trained in sword fighting. And, well, of course it's the same mask. But, you have also have the of Mira in the name, obviously. So, you know... This is this is pretty obvious that this character is directly related to Lucatiel. And it really shows because this this guy is really really good at uh sword fighting. Like, dude, what is your stamina stat? How do you have so much endurance? Or I guess flip-flop those two stats because the other one inc increases the other. There goes Ask the Teal of Mira. And for that, of course, we get our human effigy. I don't want to know what's going on in that cart. Alright, time to actually go in. And you're immediately greeted by the skeleton of a giant dragon in a another one of these carts. This is definitely an innuendo for something. You're weird, Dark Souls. Yeah. Giant skeleton dragon in the middle of a giant hallway. Uh, let's, let's just do your basic, uh, you know, explore thing where you just, like, go on the floor and just... Don't you dare. You know, message, I wasn't going to light this torch, but now that you told me not to, you know I want to. That's how people work. That's human nature. If you're told not to do something, that makes you want to do it. Okay, maybe I shouldn't have done it because th th that I just I just summoned a forlorn by lighting the torch. But um okay, well note to self, uh torch equals forlorn. So, uh use that information how you will. Like like, I'm kind of getting decent at fighting the Forlorns, but definitely not the Scythe variants, because these have way too much damage capability. Especially with those freaking spin attacks. Like, how do you even do that? What are what are you, a marching band baton twirler? No, stop doing that. <laughs> That's the weirdest analogy I've had to make. Like, a dark spirit wielding a Scythe and spinning it around as an attack. Comparing that to baton twirling. I'm sorry to any baton twirlers who are watching this, but did you just try to backstab me? Oh no, you you ain't doing that. You ain't doing that. Uh, this is gonna take a while. Yeah, so I kind of died to the forlorn. Uh huh 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 huh. I thought I was gonna be fine with my good friend Poison. There you are, standing over my corpse. Hey. Don't do the twirl. Well, why wasn't that a backstab? What, was it because I was running or something? Ow, 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 ow. I, hey, is, isn't that the attack I told you not to do, please? Come on, I'm saying please. Oh, how is the tracking on that so good? I was killed by the same forlorn. I get, screw this, I'm using arrows. Okay, so this dude closed the distance, and I only a was able to get two arrow strikes on him. Um, I'm just gonna try to maintain my- oh, s stop guarding. I wonder if I can guard break with a bow. Uh, but that would require closing the gap, which I don't really feel like doing right now, so I'm just gonna go pew pew for a minute or two. Right there. Did I just kill a forlorn by just zoning it and shooting it? Yes. Yes, I did. Do I have any shame? No. None at all. Alright, let's, uh, I guess let's finally go behind the staircase now that I'm done dying. And... Right here we have... Someone locked behind a barrier. Well, you're nicely hollowed, aren't you? Are you tormented by memories? Burdened by guilt? Now the question, are you ready for more? If you are, then we ought to talk. This, this contains my power. 
Long ago, this naive vessel of mine set about devising new spells. The fool dreamt of bringing new forms of magic into the world, but instead, he created me. Mostly by chance, but he did a fine job, I must say. What he sought was strength, and so I decided to demonstrate. While my vessel slept, I'd find my mark and hunt him down. But my vessel did not approve. And so while I slept, he sealed the both of us away. No, I don't have anything against humans. But how is it that you go about defining good and evil? I'm only using what the gods gave me. How can that be so wrong? So what say you to a spot of murder on my behalf? If you don't, I'll leave this place and take more lives. Many more. I couldn't give a fig either way, so... What's your choice? Uh, no, sir. I would not like to commit murder. Yes, yes, of course. That's what. Good. Your feeble mind can't begin to... No, I don't have... I'm a... So... Okay, so this guy right here is going through a bit of... Disassociative identity disorder? Maybe? I don't know. This man says that he doesn't have anything against humans. So let's just see what happens when we try to talk to him in human form. I haven't said anything strange, have I? I have absolutely no intention of leaving here. Do not attempt to help me. Just let me sit here and wither quietly away. Please, just stay away. No, please, don't come near me. Nothing good will come of it. Just leave me alone, please. Leave this place and leave me be, as I'd not see any harm befall you. Please, just leave me alone. Please. Please. Hmm. Interesting. This is someone who we've heard of before. This is the one known as the Royal Sorcerer, Navlan. Master of Hexes. Imprisoned. Beneath Aldia's keep, oddly. Who... He had his village burned down after a witch hunt for him. But... Yeah. That guy's kind of weird. And over here, we have a whole ocean of messages. Pull back. 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 Don't you dare. I'm sorry, Dark Souls, but you forced my hand. Warning. There is a side quest that you cannot complete once you have pulled this lever. That involves Navlan. However, for the sake of showing, of just showing content, I'm willing to pull this lever. At first, nothing seems to change. However, if we check back on Navlan, you can see that the barrier is gone. By the very gods! What have you done? You've really done it! You'll never escape him! Royal Sorcerer Navlan, you can buy um, item sets from him. You can buy the Moon Hat, you can buy the Astrologist set, or you can buy the Black Witch set, which does actually look pretty cool. You can get Great Magic Weapon, Strong Magic Shield, Dragon Charms, a Crimson Waters, Bonfire Ascetics, a bunch of different Great Arrows, and the Thunder Quartz Ring. The, As stated earlier, the quest of Royal Sorcerer Navlan is a quest filled with murder. One you can only accept when you are hollow, by the way. This side quest involves you tracking down, assassinating different NPCs for Navlan. The list goes as follows. His first, his first task for you is for you to kill Laddersmith Gilligan. His reward? A Dispelling Ring, which is a ring that decreases magic damage that you take. His next hit is Kale the Cartographer. For that, 
he will give you some simpleton spice. The third one is Falcon the Outcast, who, remember, is in uh, the entrance to Huntsman's Cops. And he will give you a very powerful pyromancy known as Forbidden Sun. This pyromancy takes an enormous amount of attunement to, to equip. I believe it takes like 43 to have one use, like 47 to have two uses, and like 90 to have three uses. Those might be wrong, but that's basically the ballpark of how expensive it is. It is a very powerful pyromancy. It just creates an explosion. It's a room nuke. But finally, the fourth hit he requests is on the Emerald Herald herself. For that, for completing his quest, you will get the Unleash Magic spell, which increases all of your magic damage. However, there are ways to circumvent this if you do not want to commit murder. There are special items associated with each of these NPCs that you can show to Fel- that not Falcon. You can show to Navlan as quote-unquote proof of your accomplishments. For Laddersmith Gilligan, you can instead give him the ladder miniature, which you can buy right from Gilligan. I don't have it right now, but yeah. The next one is Kale's helmet, which you eventually get after talking to Kale the cartographer after lighting every single one of the flames on the on the Majula underground uh, map. And finally, for Falcon the outcast, you will have to give the sun the Sunset Staff, which is what he gives you if your intelligence and faith are above 20. But for the Emerald Herald, well, we'll, we'll see in the future. But finally, finally moving on from the first floor, uh, we move on to the second floor, as one does. So let's just go around and do the normal thing of just looking. Oh, no, wait, no. Ah! What? I forgot how powerful red crystal lizards are. I forgot about those guys. I saw crystal lizard, I was like, ooh, crystal lizard, and I was like, no, that's a red one, it's gonna explode, so I got away, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think I was gonna get hit, but that's extremely far-reaching. I guess one of the good things about Aldius Keep are, is that there aren't actually a lot of enemies in here, like, in the keep, all we had, in this area, all we had so far were the kobolds leading up to the, leading up to the manor, the mimic in the garden, and the forlorn, which is technically avoidable, but, hey, I, I can't just, I can't just not fight it, let's be honest here. But here we do have the introduction of an enemy that we've already seen before in the Looking Glass Knight boss fight. Uh, I believe these are called Mirror Squires? Um... Mirror Squires, Mirror Spirits, I'm not too sure. Basically, they're NPCs that can just emerge from random mirrors. They will have this, like, entrance animation of them pounding on the mirror to break out, and then they will come attack you. You may remember that these guys have, like, the exact same animations as they did in the Looking Glass Night boss fight. You, sir, you are moving quite slowly. I don't think you have enough strength to wield that greatsword. But, uh, this item right here comes from a corpse that is halfway out of the mirror. So I guess that NPC just didn't quite escape from the mirror world. Right here, you have a Northern Ritual Band Plus 2, which I believe decreases, uh... Oh, uh, increases spells uses, but reduces HP. So I guess you have a souped up version of that. I'm just gonna open this chest while the NPC is breaking out back there. Kind of doing some speed running. And you get a bright bug, which, remember, that increases damage done and decreases damage taken. I don't think I've ever actually used one of those before. Like, it sounds good in theory, but I guess I just, I just never needed one. So you're just gonna stand there or, and let me stab you, or... Alright, you're just gonna stand there and let me stab you. That's fine. Wait, no, I don't want it. 
I don't want to drink an Estus Flask. Alright, but right here I am going to regain my humanity real quick. For the very specific reason of seeing that there is... Cell Sword Lue, which we haven't seen since the Forest of Fallen Giants. And I feel like I'm going to want to summon him. Remember that summons do have timers on them, so come on. Come on, dude. We better move. This is a pretty big level. Yeah, do the do the war cry. Yeah, war cry emote. Okay, let's go. So to get to the third floor, uh, there is a ogre that's petrified right here that we could technically unpetrify but there is a staircase over here and for ex exploration's sake i'm gonna take the staircase because i can just depetrify the ogre up here and you know there's potentially more content on that staircase of which there was absolutely nothing okay that's cool but in that cage um giant basilisk Sorry, dude, but you're gonna have to go. Okay, that, that animation was pretty funny. And with the strength the giant basilisk has right now, you're wondering why it wouldn't just break out of the cage. I guess it just needed the motivation of seeing some chump shoot at it. I don't know. I don't know why it's like roaring like a Jurassic World dinosaur, though. Yeah, yeah, you can breathe your petrification mist do all that stuff. There was a crimson water on the floor right now. Alright. Thanks, Lei. You got a dragon sage hood right there. Dragon sage hood looks pretty weird. Hood worn by the archmaster of Aldia. Several of the greatest minds converged in Aldia to weave strange new rituals, but rumors suggest that during the course of their work, their thoughts were not their own. This nebulous face mask is the designed to reflect the ire of the ritual sacrifice. Interesting. Alright, moving on over here. Is there a chest over here? Yes, there is. In this chest, we have... Two bonfire ascetics. But... Wait. Did I ever explain what bonfire ascetics do in this game? Wait, have I have I skipped that? I don't think I've ever explained that. Oh, wow. I've been running around saying like, oh, hey, we have some bonfire aesthetics, and I've never explained what they do. Okay. Basically, it turns a specific area into its new game plus variant. And by that, I mean if you burn it in a bonfire, the immediate area surrounding it will have its enemy's power boosted. Plus, its boss will respawn. So you can do this if you want to farm things, or if you want a greater challenge, because there will be stuff from New Game Plus that will be carried over into New Game. Okay. Um. Flame Butterfly, because yes, there is a torch right there, and it says, don't you dare. So I think you know what that means. Uh, yep, we have another Oh, no. Oh no, it's a, it's a scythe variant again. The way I'm I'm sorry that you have to fight a fight a scythe variant with me, but um yeah, I can't control what it is. Hopefully we get a great sword variant soon cuz those are easy to deal with. But this is going to be way easier to deal with now that I have a glorified meat shield because look at Lue. Re remember how I was talking like in the undead crypt about the Imperious Knight's great shields. Yeah, those are the ones that Cell Swords Away is wielding right now. I think I think one of them's called an Alexander Great Shield. So yeah. Okay. Guard break. Can can you be poisoned yet, please? Please, please? No? Alright. Well that was remarkably easier. Alright, goodbye, Forlorn. Time to move on to... Oh, well, I guess this is technically the fourth floor. Back down to the third floor real quick. We have... Yes, we have this, um... Petrified Ogre, which... I am wondering if it, like, maybe drops something unique, because, like, random enemies that are petrified tend to have unique drops. Like, remember back in uh, the Shaded Ruins where there was that random Lion Clan warrior... Like across the bridge that dropped the fang key, which helped, which led us to weaponsmith ornifex. Yeah, like who knows? These could have 
some really cool stuff. You can just sit down because that attack is very easy to exploit. That'd be nice, but no, you're too targeted on the way right now. Yeah, I've, I found that my new favorite strategy for taking out the ogres is just abusing their sitting attack. Oh yeah, he dropped something. A, another dragon acolyte mask. Interesting. C come on. Hey, alright. We do have one random petrified wanderer right here, which... Just for the sake of seeing what happens, because I don't know exactly what happens, let's unpetrify you and uh, execute you. Just so maybe two two bonfire aesthetics. Fair enough. Time to actually move on. Uh, in this wall, there is a door. Right next to it is a lever that currently does nothing. All right, and in here, you have a closed door. That's alright, because in this dragon's tongue, you have a lever you can pull that opens up that door. However, it closes the door behind you. Yep, you're in the long run now. There's no going back to your bonfire, so you just kind of got to deal with whatever is up right now. And it looks like above us, you've got cages full of monsters. You got... Looks like you got a mimic right there. Uh, you have... I don't even know what that is. Uh, yeah, this is very creepy. Like, there's an ogre up there. I'm not gonna risk, like, shooting these guys, but, uh... Yeah, they definitely exist. Right here is an enemy known... Like, hidden in the paintings. This is an enemy known as a dragon acolyte. We've been picking up their masks so far like see look at that oh come on oh why aren't you affected by the funny ragdoll physics got a music stand right there yeah uh dragon acolytes they're very weird enemies they're just kind of like hanging out in paintings ready to ambush like I know I probably shouldn't have just like targeted the painting because that was in because, you know, that that's very telling to that there could be stuff behind the paintings. I have no idea what I'm talking about right now. Maybe it was a bit spoilery, but who cares? It's just one enemy. They might be a little bit lore significant. I'm not quite sure on that remark, but whatever. Alright. And going through this door, which isn't locked or anything... Um, you have a sort- you have sort of a laboratory. In this laboratory, there are a bunch of ran- I swear I saw something red right there. There are a bunch of, like, bookshelves that you can break, and I'm just gonna break every single one of them just to see if there's something hiding behind them. No? Nothing? No- no- no illusory walls or anything? No? Okay, not there. How about over here? Nothing. Not really. Well, I guess there's a ferrous lockstone in that in that uh, cabinet or shelf. Down here, however, there is this uh, corrosion room with a bunch of swollen mongrels in there, and another torch. I think you know what I want to do here. Lighting the torch summons another forlorn. This time. We finally have the Greatsword variant, which is definitely easier to deal with, because the moveset isn't as crazy. But still, Forlorn are not fun to deal with unless you have a meat shield. Like, see, look, look at how much damage that did, and compare that to how much damage the spin attack from the Scythe variant does. Alright, Forlorn number three down. Now, I do have written in my notes that in this level, there is an illusory wall somewhere. I don't know exactly where, though. I didn't exactly make that obvious. But I do kind of want to explore this corrosion pit. I think I should employ the strategy of, like, uh... Well, first I'm gonna... Okay, scratch that. Well, first I'm gonna shoot down these swollen mongrels so I don't have to deal with them. But what I do want to do is go through this pool 
just de-equipping all my items because hey corrosion doesn't damage the skin as much as the curse so who cares all right let's do this boom 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 all right what items are we getting we're getting arch soul of a nameless soldier corrosive urn the way i don't think you should be in here i don't know if your equipment takes damage but i would rather not risk it we got two divine Dude, I hear your stuff breaking. I hear your stuff breaking. Stop. Get out of here. No, don't do this. I don't sound very convinced in what I'm saying. Like, oh no, please don't do this. You get a soul geyser spell right there. I, th I feel like that might be the firestorm spell, which is the one where flames erupt around you. Uh, s no, that's soul bolt. Uh... A secret art unleashes a gust of souls. The homing soul mass pierces its target, then hits repeatedly for additional damage. This blasphemous spell is a family heirloom of Lord Aldia's. It was designed to pummel foes until its power is entirely exhausted. Interesting. Alright, now time to re-equip all of my equipment. Let's see. Will I remember what slots go into what? Uh, that goes to there... Okay, I swear there there's an illusory wall somewhere in here. Like, I have it written in my notes. That it's in the corrosion room. I checked all of the walls of the corrosion room. It might be in this lab right here. But I can't find anything. Oh, this is actually kind of irritating. Come on. I know it's somewhere in here. There it is! It's in the hallway! Boom! Second bonfire! And now you can actually warp back outside of Aldia's castle. Well, I guess you can use the homeward bones, but... Oh wait, no, you can't! Oh, oh wait, no, that's just because I have a summon out. Never mind. Alright, moving on. There you have a... Okay, well here you have a door that's locked. Right there you have an ogre that is definitely, a uh, In, um... How would I say this? Um... I can punch right through because I can see I, I can see right at you distance. What what I mean is it's not on the ceiling. So Ooh, I hmm. I'm gonna lure you out here because I don't want you like triggering any other things. Like if there's any other monsters that are not ceiling level that can be triggered by you just destroying their cages then i don't want to deal with that so i'm just gonna lure you over here so i so it's very much less likely that i'm gonna have other problems all right let's see what's beyond this ogre all right looks like right here we have a fourth torch let's light our torch light this up and one more forlorn which is another greatsword variant so i'm kind of happy about that and boom dead forlorn down let's open this door it's locked that that's lovely how the heck would we open this though it's locked and there's chains on it so i don't exactly know how i would open it do any of these doors, do any of these walls happen to be fake? No? Alright, that's fine. Moving on. Maybe I can, maybe I can get through around here or something. Is this locked? Oh, it's, no, it's not locked. That's nice. What's in here? Wait, what are you trying to smash? If you're trying to smash the... No, 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 no! Oh, I saw that too late. Okay, well, I guess now we finally have the identity of what's in the carts revealed. They are basilisks, allegedly. I don't know. I don't know if that applies to every single cart, but uh, this is the only one that I know of that you can actually, like, destroy. Um, I'm going to need you to stop slapping right now so I can, like, uh, fumble through my inventory and equip my repair powder. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, you can get the jump on Cell Sword the way, but as long as you don't kill me, that's fine. There is, okay, there's no Dragon Acolyte in that painting, so that's a good thing. Oh, yeah, do your sitting attack. There we go. 
Ogre down, ogre down, ogre down. Finally, we can... We can see what's going on in this room. Looks like we have a dragon acolyte right here. Looks like this guy was in the middle of a... Uh, butchering... Something? Is, is that a crustacean? Or... I know, you have the bodies of a lot of giants right here, and down there is a hole leading to the corrosion area, so definitely don't walk in there. But, uh, yeah, I guess that's it for now. Um, this door is locked. I don't know if there's much left to do here. Is there anything past this door that I don't know of? Um, doesn't look like it. Get a simple twin spice and the oh, 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 that's mean. That's really mean. Okay, so yeah, I think you see the gimmick of Royal Sorcerer Navlan is that once you free him, his a uh, murderous uh, alter periodically invades you but putting him right next to an ogre <sighs> so there are two reasons why i'm starting off aldia's keep again from the first bonfire and not the second well first of all i do want to have access to my summon when it comes to that ogre part because i can't imagine myself dealing with that but once you light all four torches and kill all four of the forlorns can hear my controller rumble the dragon skeleton comes to life barreling its head right through the door if you dodge it and oh okay I guess that that popped up you get the Aldia key this is a key where okay where is it Aldia key Aldia key there, there it is key used in the mansion of Aldia King Vendrick condemned his own elder brother to the mansion. They both sought the truth, but through different means, as their fervor meant eventual withering of their familial tithes. So it seems like King Vendrick had an older brother that he banished to this very mansion. Alright, let, let's go get my summon back and then we can just go backtrack. So it seems like the ogre from the cage that we dropped, uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't appear to respawn. Looks like it's only the- Whoa. Okay, that was a bounce attack. It seems like only the one that was behind the door is the one that respawns, so... I guess we have one less ogre to deal with. Ooh, I, th I think I can actually just, like, lure the other one, like, down the hall over there. So I can, like, deal with Navlon, like, in a vacuum. So I have nothing else to deal with. I don't know why I'm even doing this far range right now. When I can easily just slap this ogre in the back. Because, you know, I have my glorified meat shield. Yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. You can do your swing attacks. Who cares? You're dead. Remember when ogres were hard to deal with? Yeah, I remember those days, too. Back in the Forest of Fallen Giants where you were desperately trying to, like, avoid the one ogre that was in the very beginning of the level. And where did that basilisk come from? Oh, uh, did, did, the, did the ogre slap another cart? Hmm. Yeah, it totally did. Alright. Let's deal with you now. Alright. Now that both of those ogres are dealt with, we can deal with... Royal Sorcerer Navla- There you are, there. Took, took you a moment to spawn. You missed your cue and now I'm just gonna poke you. Yeah. Royal Sorcerer Navlan is a very powerful uh, magic user, wielding a whole lot of, uh, whole lot of hexes. However, he's really no match for me and Sellsword the way combined. Especially because, like, physically he's not that powerful. Like, you saw, I just immediately started poking him. Like, once you can stun lock him, he does have, like, a melee attack, but it's literally just, like, a karate chop. And 
He's a wizard. His melee stats aren't good. So you know how he got the Aldia key, right? There are some locked doors in Aldia's keep. If we use the Aldia key, we can get into this area where it looks like some kind of laboratory slash torture chamber. You have acolytes testing on things. Oh, by the way, dragon acolytes drop petrified dragon bones so you can farm them for that. Yeah, you've got like hooks and blades hanging from the ceiling. On the table, you have a corpse with a saw to its head. You have a bunch of these dragon acolytes in the room. Plus a bunch of like a bunch of cages in the room with still living subjects in them. Like, I'm just gonna deal with these dragon acolytes, but I'm gonna show you what these subjects are. Like, right here. Yeah. You got a Belfry Gargoyle to deal with. And I don't know why it couldn't just, like, come out of the cage to just, like, kill the dragon acolytes, because it clearly just walked right through the bars. Didn't even... Didn't even have to, like, see us to get it to break the bars. No, it just walked right through them. I'm pr I think there's, like, some kind of meme that has, like, some character that is clearly small enough to get through some prison bars. But, oh, I don't know how I lived that. I have no idea how I lived that. Yeah, you can see, we. you might be able to tell that we actually have someone shooting at us, like, further down the room, so... Yeah, you got some magic bolts to deal with, too. Like, see? See, look look at that. Look at that hex. Just barrel right towards my face. All right, that's another rematch with the Belfry Gargoyle down. And over here is not the Prowling Magus. Prowling Magus is a specific enemy. This one, this enemy is known as an Aldia Warlock. Yeah. This is literally just Prowling Magus. Remember that stupid boss fight back in Brightstone Cove, Zeldora? Where it was literally just a necromancer in a room with a bunch of priests and a bunch of zombies on the ground? Yeah, that's this guy. Just an Aldia Warlock. Alright, we got the Dragon Acolyte Gloves. A large soul of a brave warrior back there. And as you may notice, there was a bunch of chests in the rooms. Oh. Oh, I forgot to power stance my stuff. But, uh, yeah, that chest is a mimic, so, uh, don't open that one. Sir, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to ask you to not spit at me, please. But, yeah, that chest is a mimic. And now that I've put that little, uh, little nugget of information in your head on what, on the fact that there are mimics in this room... It's only natural that you would want to check every single chest from here on out to see if it's a Mimic or not. Alright, yeah. This one is definitely a Mimic. What do you drop? A Bonfire Ascetic. You have a chest right here, which is also a Mimic. Past these panes of glass, which are here for some reason. Like, encased in stone, too. Like, that's pretty cool. But I don't know why it's in, like, some kind of weird test chamber. Slash torture chamber. And I just went through that guy's legs. You drop a cracked red eye... Two cracked red eye orbs. And is that the last chest in the room? Yes, it is. Alright, now back to the other side of the room where we had the warlock. There is a door right here that you can use the Aldia key to get through. This, I believe, yeah, this one can take you around to the second ogre, where you can kind of take it on from behind, but you do have to get to the fourth uh, forlorn uh, torch to access, so it's not exactly worth it. If you pull this lever... Yeah, those cages in this room just exploded. I think you can tell what that means for the hallway. Yep. Every cage in the hallway is now broken, allowing every single entity trapped in Aldia's keep to walk free. Yeah, we got a whole gauntlet of enemies to take on. 
first one here is a mimic, which drops a fragrant branch of yore. Which that hey that that's pretty cool. Ooh, I should pro I should probably go buy some repair powder. Yeah, I only have one left. All right, next one down the line. I I guess I guess this popped open all of the all of the uh friggin uh carts too. Right here is an enemy that was act actually never seen before. This is an enemy known as an undead aberration. I ta I touched on it briefly in the past when we were exploring Sinner's Rise. I talked about how in the original release of Dark Souls 2, there was no Flexile Sentry in Sinner's Rise. That was added in Scholar of the First Sin Edition. Instead, you would be faced with an undead aberration, which is what's right here. It looks like some kind of manticore, like it, it has what seems to be a some kind of bug-like tail but it, it it's like a mountain of flesh it has like spikes poking out of it and a weird human face which you didn't exactly get to see but it does have like an eight pack got an old radiant life gem three twinkling titanites a raw stone and over here you still have a locked door. I have no idea how to open that. That might just not even open. Who knows? And heading further down this line, I believe this might be the last enemy you have to face, but right here you have a giant corrosive broomer. So I'm going to do the natural decision and shoot at it from afar because I don't want all of my equipment to break within like five seconds. And just like that, Cell Sword of the Way just kills it in five seconds. All right. With a corrosive urn. Now there's only one thing to do in this stage. Let's just pause to see the gorgeous view on the bridge from Aldia's Keep. Like, look at these pillars. This is like the, the my background image for my PlayStation for like a solid year. But now, the two of us traverse the fog door. Remember that dragon from Hyde's Tower of Flame that was guarding the Cathedral of Blue? That is a guardian dragon. However, this is a different kind of dragon. This is a boss version known as the... Oh wait, no. The one in front of the Cathedral of Blue was a, was a red dragon. This one is the guardian dragon. You... It, it fights... It, it, it is literally a copy-pasted enemy. It just has more health and is more potent with its attacks. You may remember that the gar that the red dragon did have like a AoE fire attack where it flew up into the air and shot fire from above. I actually don't know if I if we ever saw it, but if we did then yeah, it basically just flies up into the air and hits you with fire from above. This can make the guardian dragon pretty tedious to fight as if you don't have any ranged weapon options, which Honestly, if you don't have a ranged weapon by now, what are you even doing? There's so many enemies that can be cheesed with a ranged weapon. Uh, yeah, you have to deal with it spewing, spewing AoE fireballs from above, and they really hurt. But now that we're fighting it in boss form, it is much more manageable, considering that we have many more healing items. Like, our Estus shards, our Estus lasts, are, like, completely maxed out by this point in the game. And... Yeah, we just have much stronger weapons. We have act we actually have summons to deal with this guy now. And we have hopefully stronger ranged weapons. Like, I have my fully upgraded short bow that honestly I'm I was considering like swapping it out for like a Dragon Rider Great Bow from uh Strait of Olifus. Cause I do have the boss souls to burn. Like I have two Dragon Rider souls. I can definitely I'm definitely willing to part with one of them to get myself a powerful bow, but I've used the short bow so much that it's just become very reliable, you know. It's a plus 10 short bow. Like, beginning items, you- I believe I touched on this like very early into the series, but items you start the game with, you can very well carry them into the end game. I remarked about how in one of my previous playthroughs, uh, I had a plus 10, uh, longsword that I had from my original starting class that I just carried through the end of the game. I believe in that set I also used the 
key to the embedded as part of that weapon set, which it looking back is honestly I have no idea why I did that, like I couldn't upgrade it, like it had decent stats, but not nothing stellar. Anything. Nothing to nothing to like brag about. Just like I thought it was weird, so I used it. So yeah. I, sp I spent this entire boss fight like barely even talking about the Guardian Dragon, but hey look, we already killed it! A pretty tedious boss fight, pretty easy boss fight, but still, it feels nice to kill a dragon in these games. But that's basically it of Aldia's Keep. Like, we explored a giant mansion, saw some creepy test subjects. And killed a dragon. I say, that's a pretty successful outing. Next time on Dark Souls 2. We see where this elevator takes us. Oh boy, the royal family and their elevators. See you guys then.